Hello, everybody, and welcome to the November 25th Trips and Traps. I'm Andy Sterling, joined by Eric Goddard. And we have three races to bring you this week. We'll start things off on the turf in the flit along stakes. This from November 18th. Race number eight, we're looking at the one Dynast Lou in the 10 denomination. And this was a race that was won on the front end by West Ocean stretching out. A paceless race on paper, a more paceless race in the track. And watch the one Dynast Lou, who's being wrangled back here by Jose Lescano. And I'm a big fan of Jose. I think he's a terrific rider, the huge future. I don't know if it was his decision or it was instructions, but it clearly was the wrong decision because he had the inside post. There was no speed on paper. This race developed the way it looked like it was. And you would think there'd be an impetus to hold that ground, go a little bit. The eight wants to go on, whatever, but at least be in position. He should be in position. The three is on the inside. Instead, he's all the way back. Denomination, on the other hand, who has the disadvantageous 10 post, at least Ramon Dominguez, who's riding him, recognized there was no pace. This situation going to happen. I have to get into the game. It takes away from denomination the way she wants to run, but at least he puts her there. Dinah Slew's already five lengths behind. They're going, they're crawling. Yeah, I agree. And Dinah Slew should be no worse than sitting just right behind the, the three horse in here, and that was uh, Akalina. Uh, but the pace very slow in this race, 25 and 4, 52 and 1. So, you know, you can visually get a good look at how slow the pace is, but when he's, once you know the fractions, I mean, it's a clear disadvantage here for Dinah Slew, who's now trying to make some ground up the rail. Right. When, what, what is the point? Why would you have that position early, especially with the inside post? Drag her back and then realize, oops, all right, well, the mistake, but the mistake has already been made. It's already over. She's not winning. The mistake was made at the start. She was taken out of her game. Denomination, I think, ran very well here. And I'm not sure the Denomination may not have run better than Dinah Slew did. I just think, that, I don't know where you're going with Denomination going forward. She's going to be a short price. She's gotten herself into jackpots before. Dinah Slew, I think, is one a little buried now. I agree. And uh, also trying to come up the inside and the stretch, too. You know, kind of a tricky spot there where that temporary rail uh, stops and, and the horses come out of the chute there. Uh, I don't know what to make of Dinah Slew on the finish up here. You know, I, I, it looks like she shows some interest here. Doesn't look like she's, you know, really gaining too much, though. And you know, I think it's a good race to, to be able to better back off of next time. Yeah, I think she galloped out past uh, the leaders right after the wire. I don't know what that means. The galloped out. Gallop outs are one of the great mysteries of horse racing because sometimes you see horses gallop out, you know, first time starting two year old, thinking, it's impressive. They come back. They can't run. Who knows? But I agree. Dinah Slew. Denomination's okay, and I thought she ran very well. Dinah Slew's one, though, I'm looking forward to running. She's going to run a Gulfstream, I assume. Maybe she'll... You know, I wouldn't be shocked to see a lot of this crew meet up. Is it the Francis Genter? Is it the, the, the Dinah the Calder Calder sort of late in the meet? Yeah. They could meet there. We'll hear from them again. Absolutely. All right. We'll take a look at another race now. And uh, one of our all-time favorites here in Trips and Traps, we're looking at the Vin Man, uh, number one horse from, uh, September, from uh, November 20th, race number six. Yeah, this was a race we did... First of all, to be honest, Eric and I had a lot of trouble finding races we found super interesting from last week. We thought this was an interesting race because there was chatter about this. Because the Vin Man got a rare sort of in, appearing to be somewhat indecisive ride by Ramon Dominguez. And I think it's one where if you ask Ramon Dominguez afterwards, he would say, well, if I had to do over again with, with the benefit of hindsight, I would have done things differently. But I think he got skunked trying to do the right thing. Yeah, I think so, too. We'll take a look at it more in-depth, uh, look in the stretch. When we, when we uh, look at the head-on, you'll see more of what we're talking about here. But uh, the leader at this point is Wallaston Bay, who, you know, third start off the layoff here, has a lot of speed. This is going to be Wallaston Bay's best start in, in quite some time here. He actually holds on pretty well. Uh, but uh, you see the Vin Man move up just outside the uh, number four horse there. Carson's Legacy was the favorite in the race. And now you're going to see where kind of Dominguez has to make a decision here. He's down inside. Does he try to wait and go outside? Does he try to stay where he is and, and try to make a run up the rail? Yeah, I, the truth. The truth is that riders, most of the time, unless you have an extreme gold rail and there's a big open path, would rather get their horses out in the clear. Now, coming in the stretch, it appears that he has the room, room to go through on the inside. Wallison Baby comes over a little bit, or Wallison Bay comes over a little bit, and now he tries to go outside. Well, the door gets slammed on him there. He's got to be forced to go back inside, and he's trying to find a hole, and he does, but the horse doesn't accelerate right away through, and Ramon's already sort of gotten behind the eight ball, but when he gets through, he gets clear, and he really just misses. He should have won the horse. Yeah, if you switch the trips between him and the winner, the chief export, obviously, uh, the Vin Man would have won by probably more uh, than just the neck. And here's the Vin Man now, and this is what we're talking about. Wallace's Bay is the horse in the green blinkers there. There's plenty of room to come up the inside there, but Dominguez sees Wallace and Bay come over a little bit. He says, let me get to the outside here, so I'm not encumbered by this horse anymore. Well, then, you know, Wallace and Bay comes out a little bit, the horse to the outside comes in, he's shut off there, and has to come back to the rail. In hindsight, if he would have stayed on the rail the whole time, I think he might 
to win the race. Yeah, but I'll tell you something, you know, I think you're absolutely right. But and then again, maybe Jose Garcia, who was riding Wallace, maybe he, he recognizes that. And he's race riding. And actually, you know, this is race riding by riders. You ride in that sort of one and a half to two path, and there's a guy inside of you. He can't really get through. He goes outside. And this is very good race riding. And then Chavez slammed the door and the horse was in the outside. This is all good race riding. These are jockeys who are trying to do the best of their horses. And in an unusual situation, Ramon got victimized. Usually he's victimizing somebody else. Yeah, he, I think he might have outsmarted himself a little bit there at <laughs> yeah. the top of the stretch. One more race to bring you, and this is a maiden race from uh, Saturday. It's uh, race number six, the uh, first time starter make history who makes some heck of a run here to just miss the uh, win spot. We're also going to take a look at the nine month senior who we thought was a little bit green in uh, his debut. Right. Make history is the one everybody's talking about. They're talking about him before the race. They're talking about him rightfully so after the race. He ran very well, a tough beat. I just think that make history is one when, and you'll see them break, and he's going to break about three quarters, half or three quarters of a length slow, drops back about two lengths. It's the position you lose. He's going to be a short price next time. We expect him to be a nice horse, but we don't care because we're not betting him at four to five. Monsignor, the nine horse, a first time starter, <clears throat> he will be a bigger price. He'll be a much bigger price, and I think uh, going forward, uh, I would want some some more time to bet Monsignor. I'm not looking forward to betting him back in two or three weeks. I think he needs, you know, maybe another couple of months before he hits his stride. We'll take a look at, at the head on uh, of him and show you and tell you what we're talking about here. But at this point, recognize the, the pace of the race here is very fast. Uh, the uh, the winner of the race, Citizens Arrest, is setting out very fast fractions, going 21 and 3, 45 and 1. Make history. Makes a good little run here from the back of the pack, and as he straightens out in the stretch, really kicks in well. He does. You will see him. You'll see. Mon Senior all the way on the outside in the green silks, and there's Make History in the yellow silks moving in the two path. Monsignor behind him once again, very wide. The thing about this was, and, and, I, and I said this having bet money on Make History, so it's not, this is a, an, an, the opposite of sour grapes. He broke a little slowly, arguably he may have been best, but you know what? He had a pretty good trip after that break, and the winner ran hard every step of the way here behind that fast pace. So it's not as though the winner was immeasurably lucky. Make History had a good trip and ran like a good horse. I thought, though, that Monsignor, as you point out, and we'll show the head on, very green on the back stretch, very wide. It's like John Velasquez knew this horse is just not acting very smart. It's a first-time starter. I'm not getting in trouble with this horse. He's not ready to win. And, he, you know, he rode him as well as he could, but it's not like he was saving ground. All right, here's the Monsignor in the, in the green silks, uh, basically third from the outside. Now you see him start to shy away from horses there a little bit, and it gets even more pronounced as they, they come down the stretch. He ducks in there, ducks out a little bit. Johnny's just having a hard time controlling him. That horse to the inside comes out a little bit here. He's going to shy away from that horse. So, you know, he's all, all swerving all over the place here. And as you see, as they go into the turn, he's just going to end up very wide, probably about the, the sixth path here. And, uh, you know, this is a horse that I think has a lot of learning to do. And like I said before, I won't look forward to betting him in two to three weeks. I think he probably needs more like a couple of months to try to figure things out. Right. And I think he lost the race by less than five lengths total and, and lost by about a half length or so for, for second, for third money here. He's OK. And you're right. He's going to show up, I would expect. One of the first few Saturdays at Gulfstream Park, somewhere in January is when I would expect to see Monsignor, and I'm looking forward to betting him. You know, Tommy Abertani had a pretty good horse a few years ago named Bernardini that didn't do well in his first start, and he ended up being a pretty good horse. Yeah, Tommy's an excellent trainer and can definitely, uh, can definitely turn the lights on those horses overnight, that's for sure. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Trips and Traps. Remember to keep those viewer comments coming. Our email is tripsandtraps at nairainc.com. And this will be the only episode, of course, uh, this week. Uh, there's one more week left of the main track. We'll be back next weekend. Thanks again.